Good morning, everyone. My name is Annie Fink, and I'm the Marketing Specialist for Viva Select California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today, focused on Aviva Asset Information Management. After the webinar this morning, we'll be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or you can email us at webinar at california.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenter for today's webinar, Sarah Sully, Senior Consultant with Aviva. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and hi, everyone. Yes, my name is Sarah Suley, and I am a technical consultant at Aviva. Uh, so my focus is on our asset information management solution, which is um, what I'm going to give you a high-level overview of today. So before joining Aviva, I also worked in industry as a process engineer with experience at an oil refinery, as well as at a mineral processing facility in northern Canada. And in my years of industry, I've definitely become familiar with the challenges that the companies that I've worked at faced with information management. Um, so for today's agenda, I'm going to be giving you some insight into what AIM is, the benefits of using AIM, who can use AIM, uh, some use case stories from our customers, and we're also going to, at the end, walk through a, a use case scenario in our demo environment. So one of the main challenges that AIM is looking to solve is siloed applications. And this is universal across industries now. Everybody has multiple sources of digital information from different applications. So you can see here we have you know, our 3D isometrics, P and IDs, information from our CMMS systems, and, and so on. And all of these uh, different applications and all the data inside them is stored in different locations. And typically they're not integrated and they don't work together. So in order to access the information in these different programs, you need to have access to all of these specific programs in order to, you know, get the information that you're looking for. And this is, you know, is going to lead to other challenges such as how do you know that the information that you're accessing is the latest information out there? And it can also lead to lost time looking for information due to those access issues. You may not have access to every single um, application that your company uses. And it can lead to you know, the wrong decisions being made because you have the wrong information. So Aviva's asset information management it says right there, intuitive access to previously siloed information. So AIM is an agnostic tool that is able to connect information from your siloed applications into a single platform. And since it's agnostic, it doesn't matter you know, what the format is or the application that it's coming from, it can pull in that information from third party applications. It's able to search for those unique identifiers and generate relationships across the data in these applications, connecting your asset tags to your drawings, documents, and databases, and overall allowing your information to be searched and navigated and viewed in a contextualized way. Uh, basically giving you, you know, a Google for your engineering information. It can also allow you to analyze your data. So there's the ability to create reports and KPIs that can span across your organization's data. So you know you can identify those issues affecting your data completeness, your data correctness, or your cons or your data consistency. And all of this is delivered on a web-based platform, which means that it can be viewed, you know, from a tablet, a smartphone or you know, your regular, regular computer. Uh, so what this is doing, uh, this slide here, is just giving you a visualization of how all this information that's not normally integrated becomes connected using AIM. So you can see here we have you know, our SAP, our Excel spreadsheets, PDFs, we have uh, AutoCAD, and just, just from a bunch of different sources. So we're able to reach inside those third-party applications and retrieve the information that you need to complete your work. And everything is connected back to that equipment tag or that unique identifier. So that's how the relationship is created. And because all of this data is connected in a single platform, we're able to identify those errors and inconsistencies across just about any software platform. 
So who can use asset information management? I like to say that everyone in your organization who needs access to information to make decisions will benefit from using AIM. So, you know, whether you're an owner operator or you're an EPC in operations, you know, maintenance supervisors and planners can quickly prepare maintenance files and activities by being able to access those asset information, all the asset information in one space. Operations personnel can quickly investigate operational issues with quick access to running information, equipment information, PNIDs. And all of your engineering teams are going to have, you know, that integrated look at running, running conditions, inspection reports, all that engineering information in order to determine, you know, root cause for equipment failures, process upsets, and, and so on. And, you know, in your EPC teams, plant manager, project managers, sorry, are able to have a full view of project completeness with up to date information and the ability to review those project KPIs in the planning and procurement, you're going to be able to better visualize the status of, of our project and determine, you know, those timeframes more effectively. And overall, our engineering teams are able to work together seamlessly by having that single access to our single source of truth that contains up to date information on project uh, on all your project information for all of your disciplines. So what is the benefits of, of having, having these capabilities? So there are three things that I'd like for you to remember and take home uh, to remember about AIM. And that is that AIM is going to help drive effective decision-making. So everybody in your organization is gonna be able to collaborate with having that access to trusted data. It's gonna reduce the time to search and collect information because all of that info is in one contextualized space, is able to be searchable, and those relationships are, are there within your data. And AIM is going to offer that single source of truth. So you're going to be able to see those inconsistencies in your data and eliminate them. And these benefits, are able to be seen you know, across all industries. It's pretty universal. So what are the use cases? So whether it's project execution, handover, or operations and maintenance, there is a use case for AIM in all these scenarios. So from project execution, giving that single source of validated information for engineering and design, the ability to measure project conformance and completeness, and allowing collaboration with the entire project team. For handover, it's going to allow progressive and transparent handover with owner operators because everybody's gonna have that, you know, agreed and known data model and maturity, enhancing the handover process and operational readiness. So owner operators can be confident that they're ready to start up when the time comes. And in operations and maintenance, we're gonna be able to improve decision-making with engineering information tied to our operational and maintenance systems. We have the ability to improve safety, operational efficiency, maintenance processes, and reduce the time spent looking for information for your teams. So all of this is enabling the connected worker. So better decisions are going to be able to be made faster when everybody has that fingertip access to the correct information. So now I'm just going to walk through a couple of our uh, real world use cases for companies who have implemented AIM into their processes and, and organizations. Uh, so the first one I'm going to talk to you about today is well known EPC design firm Burns and McDonald. So they used AIM to enhance their capital project collaboration. They had challenges with disconnected data, documents and models, and maintaining their existing data from different sources. They wanted to find a way to combine and visualize their data without needing to access all those file types and of course, improve collaboration within their entire team. So by implementing AIM, they were able to take data from those disconnected sources and map it to a single source. This also allowed users to have the ability to quickly inspect data because it was in that one simple interface. 
they were able to measure project status and deliverable data with AIM reporting dashboards. They could report on KPIs such as tag completeness, tag conformance, and tag consistency, and overall giving them a more transparent visualization on exactly where they sat within their projects. Uh, next, we have Wood Group, another well-known engineering and consulting business. They used a combination of our tools, including AIM, to help connect 4,000 workers across a wide geographic footprint. So they had challenges connecting their wide range of workers, and they also had challenges with information deficits, which stemmed from aging brownfield assets. So they implemented AIM to achieve a data centric data-centric project execution and, and really drive that effective and efficient handover. This enabled collaboration across teams and, G, and ac across their, you know, their 4,000 wide team of workers and improving their operational readiness. Uh, so overall, it resulted in 90% less rework from brownfield assets, 200% faster model production, and of course, just having that single source of truth. And the last one that uh, I'll discuss with you today is Petroleum Development Oman. So they're a leading oil and gas exploration and production company in Oman. They had challenges with poor information management, information stored in a wide variety of formats, and they wanted to avoid making poor decisions due to having bad information. So overall, AIM helped them improve their data management, their safety, and return valuable time to their workers. Uh, we implemented AIM to enable accurate and detailed visualization across their organization, which gave them access and navigation across a digital version of their plant, eliminating all of those data silos. And overall, it resulted in a reduction of 10,000 worker days, 5% uh, of total worker time was saved on searching for information. And they noted that it was an equivalent of an extra 50 skilled workers at no extra cost. So now we're gonna go into our use case demonstration. So the scenario that we're going to walk through today is there has been a pump issue identified in our operating facility. and um, so the operations team has identified an issue with one of our pumps. So it's J9002A. And in this scenario, we're part of the maintenance team. And it's our responsibility to determine, you know, what is the path forward, uh, maybe start to plan our lockout tago requirements, and overall come up with, you know, what is the maintenance procedure uh, for this fix. So what we're going to do in AIM is just walk through the steps of how AIM can help us gather that information that we need to start making that informed decision. So I'm just gonna pop over to my AIM environment. I'm just gonna give it a quick refresh to make sure I don't time out. So it might just take a couple of seconds here. Okay, so here is our Aviva Asset Information Management. This is our home screen for AIM uh, on our web browser. So as you can see here, we have our collect, locate, discover, view, and report. So those are the capabilities that we have within our solution. So now that we know that we have an issue with one of our pumps, the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is, is find that pump within AIM and start really gathering that information together. We wanna to understand what's going on, start working towards a path forward on, on what the solution is for, for this issue. So we have a couple of ways to get there. So we have our browse function and we also have our search function. So I'm just gonna start off with our browse function, because I want to show you the, the two different ways that, that we can get to the information we're looking for. So I'm going to pop open this browse, and you can see here that we have, you know, a bunch of information that is uh, kind of structured or kind of laid out in a structured way. So this type of hierarchy is actually, uh, it's actually configurable based on how you want your data to be structured. So this is uh, how we have it structured for, for our facilities. We have 
uh, tags by location, tags by system, by manufacturer. We can also navigate through the documents by type and documents by discipline. So I'm going to start drilling down until I find the pump that we're looking for. So I'm going to start with my tags by location, and I'm going to start to drill down. We're in our IED location. Uh, we'll go to facilities, get to our functional artifacts, and here we can see we've made it to our equipment class. So once I open that up, I scroll down, I find my pumps. And you can see here, uh, this is populated with every single pump that we have in our facility. We can pan forward to the next page or, or stay where we are. I'm gonna scroll down and I can see our J9002A pump here. So I'm just gonna click that open. And this brought us to the tag summary page for this pump, which is going to contain all the information that we have on this piece of equipment. But I'm going to circle back to this. Um, I also want to show you the search function. So I'm going to go into our search. And you can see here that we have, you know, we can enter an ID or a name. We can also drill down to, you know, the type of item that we're searching for. But uh, since we know the name, we don't really have to bother with that right now. So I'm just gonna type in my J9002A. And you can see here, we have the, popu the results populated here. Uh, we can see the first one, we can see it's J9002A and the type is pump. So we, we can be fairly certain that this is the exact pump we're looking for. And here we go, right back to our tag summary page. So now I'm gonna walk through this tag summary page because this is where we're gonna find all that maintenance information that we're looking for in order to you know, solve the problem with this pump, make the plan to do it. Uh, so you can see here, we have the status, so we can see that the pump is active. We can see the name, the title, the type of equipment as pump, of course. Uh, we can look at our location, any aliases that may exist, uh, that may refer to it as a slightly different name. Um, and this first box here that we can see is our attributes. So what this section is doing is it's pulling together all the attributes and pieces of information that we have from all of our different source systems. And it's grouping them together in these different sections. So we have our core, our functional, physical, and, and it keeps going on. But we have them grouped and structured in a way that we want these attributes to be grouped together and represented. Uh, and this is configurable as well, based on um, you know, what attributes you want shown here and how you want them separated and sorted and organized. But you can see here, right in my core attributes, I can already get my first piece of, of information. And that is that it's a low pressure flare knockout drum pump, which is you know, already giving me more information than what I previously had. I know the function of this pump now. Um, and up here, if there's something that we can't specifically see right in our front of our eyes, but we want to search for it, we can actually search for things in our attributes as well. So if for some reason I wanted the serial number, I can type that in up there. And since we have that as one of our physical attributes, it's going to populate here and I can quickly see the serial number for this pump. Uh, so if we keep moving along here, uh, we have our links. So what this is doing is it's embedding uh, external links from, you know, our operational um, applications, our maintenance applications, and giving us that ability to be able to access those right from the space as well. So uh, we can actually access our work order system, our Pi Vision, predictive analytics. We can raise a work request. Uh, taking us to that external application. Um, and also we have our external views. So from here, we can actually stream in uh, some live operational data from our Aviva Insight. We also have you know, our Pi Vision here, uh, Point Cloud Viewer, all able to be streamed here. So if I am trying to figure out what the issue might be with this pump, it might be a great idea for me to look at some live operational data to see, you know, what is exactly going on. We can have a look at, um, you know, our bearing temperatures, they'll just be a second loading in. Um, we can look at our motor status, 
uh, our motor vi our motor bearing vibration, and, and so on. And and what this is going to allow me to do is is really understand you know what the issue is probably stemming from. If I'm someone from maintenance, I'm going to be able to look at this and know exactly what what may be causing this. Um, so another thing that we have here is our parts and our components. So AIM is, is smart enough to be able to make those connections. It knows that this motor and these three nozzles are part of the components that make up this pump. Um, so if just say there was an issue with our motor, I can actually go into the tag summary page for this, mo for this motor and I can see uh, all of the associated information specific to this motor as well. So, uh, you know, you're able to really get that information in context and very quickly be able to see the connections um, within our data. Uh, so if I go even further, uh, this is the documents and 3D model space. So what this is, uh, this is doing is it's showing every document and every 3D model that we have that is associated with this pump. So you, if we, as we go down, we can see, you know, we have our 3D models, we can look at our annual maintenance procedure. So we can even, you know, we can get here, open this up, our maintenance procedure and our maintenance processes for this pump, which is some great information if, if we're looking for a fix for this pump. Uh, if we go even further, uh, we can see, you know, our HSC procedures, inspection reports, incident reports. We can even view our maintenance work orders from here. So we can open up our work order and then we can quickly see, okay, the motor is overheating on a regular basis. So that's more information for me that I didn't previously know. Um, so if we keep going, um, we can even get, you know, to our mechanical installation manual. So this will give us, you know, all the operational installation and maintenance data for this for this pump as well. And uh, we can even see our, our shift handover log. So that can give us, you know, some information on, um, you know, what, what operations exactly noted as the problem and when it occurred. So we can get some information here, our J9002A pump. And we can also see that our, um, pump in parallel is is not operating as uh, is not the repair is not completed as well. Um, so the next step for me uh, to figure out, you know, get more information on this pump is I probably want to understand how this is connected in our process and what it's connected to. And a, a great way to do that is I can view my piping and instrumentation diagram from our documents and 3D models. So if I open this up, it's going to zoom me right into the location that I'm looking for uh, and highlight the pump. It's also going to give me this content card, which is going to show me all of the associated information that we have on our pump, similar to what we saw on the tag summary page. So we can see, you know, the details, the attributes, related items, related documents, and we're even able to stream in those external views from, from our PNID as well. So as I'm starting to make this plan of, you know, maybe the lockout procedure, I'm looking for, you know, pieces of equipment that are in line with our pump. And as I look around, you can see that um, as I hover over a piece of equipment or an instrument or a pipe, uh, the tag name comes up above. And that's because uh, these PNIDs are smart and hot spotted. So any piece of equipment or any item that contains information within AIM is going to be accessible from this space. So if I click on this valve, for example, that's in line with our pump, um, I will get, you know, the tag summary for this pump is uh, for this valve as well. I can look at the attributes, related items, related documents, um, just getting that information in context. I can even access, you know, the tag summary page for this valve from here. So if I click on uh, our selected tag, this will bring me to the tag summary page for this valve. So really it gives you the ability to have a full 360 degree view uh, of all of your assets and all of your items that you have in your facility. Um, so the next step for me 
if I'm trying to plan this work is, you know, trying to get a better understanding of how everything is laid out physically in the field. And, uh, you know, if there's any access issues or things like that. So another, another thing that I can do next is I can go to my related documents. I can go to, you know, my 3D model and I can open that up from here. And this is just going to take uh, just a couple of seconds to load up. Um, here we go. So you can see here, I'm already getting that content card similar to what we just saw on our p &ID. So, you know, all that associated information, all that information and context is still here. And what this did was it brought me to the, the 3D model and also zoomed me in and highlighted the exact pump that I'm looking for. So I'm able to, to pan around and, and look around in this 3D model. Uh, this is uh, streamed in from um, our, our 3D model that is our, um, our native file. Um, so, so in our model, uh, any piece of equipment similar to what we saw in our PNID is selectable from here as well. So if I wanted to you know, select this valve, it'll highlight it and I'll get the content card for this valve as well. So all the information and context is still seen in our 3D model. So having this ability uh, to have a look at what it looks like in the field is gonna give me an idea of you know, access issues, if there's any valves uh, located high up, may have to plan for scaffolding. It's gonna you know, tell me if there's any extra requirements for PPE. So if it's you know, something that's located really high up in an awkward position, you may need fall arrest. If it's located in you know, an area where we need um, some respirators or, or things like that, some gas monitoring, uh, really give us you know, those, those details that we need to, to better formulate our job plan. And uh, this is uh, pretty much covers what I wanted to show with our AIM solution today. So you can see that we were able to access a range of data that came from different sources. Uh, so, you know, we could look at running data to understand the issue in real time. We were able to look at maintenance procedures, manuals, uh, shift handover logs, work orders, and we were able to understand the process that our pump was a part of by visualizing the PNID and also see how it was laid out in the, in the field by accessing our 3D. And I was able to get all of that information in just you know, a few minutes. I didn't have to ask around for other people for information. I didn't need to have access to all of these different source systems. And I was able to gather all the info that we needed very quickly and be confident that it was the right information because we know that we have the single source of data. So, you know, today to recap, uh, we discussed how AIM can eliminate data silos and how anyone who deals with, you know, large amounts of data from different sources can benefit from using AIM, you know, from the project execution to handover to operations and maintenance. AIM is going to help drive effective decision-making. It's gonna reduce the time required to search and collect information. And it's going to offer that single source of truth. So that's all I have for you today. So uh, we're ready to open the floor up for questions if we have some. Perfect, thanks Sarah. And we did have a few questions come in. Our first one is, if it's web-based, does that mean that the information is stored in the cloud? So we have uh, a few different options actually for our AIM solution. Uh, we do have a, a great cloud option. We also have uh, options that are on-premise and uh, we have a combination of, uh, of cloud and on-prem. So we have a hybrid version of, as well. So if cloud is something that, that you're looking for, we, we definitely, we have that solution, yes. Wonderful. And then our next question is, does this equipment information need to be manually uploaded or um, can a user use an Excel file or CSV file to import? Yes, uh, you can definitely use uh, an Excel file or a CSV file to, to upload that information. We're able to, to grab all that information from an Excel file uh, as part of our data load into the system. 
Um, and then how any... often is the data refreshed? Okay, uh, so the data can be refreshed on whatever interval that it is that you want. So you can set this up for, for your different pieces of data. So some, some things that you have may need to be, you know, refreshed and updated more often than others. Um, so you can choose that interval and also if you know that you have a, a large amount of information that has been changed, you can also manually start a, a data refresh as well. Perfect. Um, and then our next one is, um, so I'm assuming this is middleware for other so software. What is the communication mechanism to CMMS, um, for example? Uh, so the way that we're able to communicate with uh, your third party softwares is uh, through what we call our AIM gateways. So we have gateways that are set up for, you know, these different uh, software applications that you have and and in in those gateways is the is the process that we use for scraping that data and uh, you know making those connections wonderful and then can revision of data and documents be done in aim uh, so no, uh, AIM is not an authoring tool. So uh, if there were any changes or updates that you wanted to make to, to your documents, you'd have to update them in the system of origin. Uh, but AIM does have an audit trail to tell who made the change and when the changes were made. So you can easily uh, determine who made the change, when it was made. You can also see, you know, determine what the latest uh, version of the data and document is as well. Perfect. And then can AIM be viewed in the field? Yes, uh, AIM can be viewed in the field. So because it is a web-based application, you can view it from, you know, your mobile device or tablets. I, I know that in uh, out in the field now, there are a lot of, uh, you know, operations or maintenance personnel using tablets. So you can definitely view it from there. Uh, wherever you can access, you know, uh, the web, you can, you can access our AIM solution. Perfect. And then um, it looks like our last one for now. Can you control the information information users are able to see? Uh, yes, yes, we can. So we have uh, in our AIM solution the we have the option of creating roles. So what a role is going to do is uh, you're going to be able to control. Uh, what information like a particular role is going to be able to to access, and uh, be able to control. You know for different users what information they can see. And then we just had another one come in. Um, what is t the typical time requirement to complete the integration? Uh, so that really depends. So it, it depends on, on your data model, how much information that you have. It's gonna depend on um, your your digital data's uh, where where you sit now in your data maturity and and like how many changes or how many um, how we're gonna have to deal with you know uh, making those uh, new standards and things like that uh, so it really depends but we are able to you know very quickly uh, create a solution but it really depends on where you are with your data. Wonderful. Um, and that looks like all of our questions for now. Um, so thank you, Sarah, and thank you to everyone who attended. If anyone would like to review any portion of this webinar, a recording will be available on YouTube and our website, california.wonderware.com, once available, and, you're be, and you will be receiving a copy of it via email. Thank you again for attending, and have a great day. Thank you, everyone.